I'm 25 female and my fiance 34 male are currently on the verge of a breakup because he is demanding that I apologize, but I refuse to do so. And here I am on Reddit looking for some advice. To start with, I met my fiance Chris on Bumble five years ago when I was a university student. He seemed quite normal, ambitious, funny, stylish, compared to some of the other guys I had unfortunately met. We decided to meet for morning coffee at Starbucks after two weeks of texting each other. I was standing in front of Chris and we were waiting in line to order our coffees. When my turn came, I asked for a slice of cake along with my coffee and I watched Chris get visibly annoyed until he noticed that I took out my wallet to pay for my order. After taking our order, we went to get a seat, which is when he started asking if I had ordered the cake, thinking he would pay for me. I shook my head and told him that I never thought that way, and I just don't like having coffee on an empty stomach. He then joked about how I had probably ordered the $2 slice of cake because I was just a student anyway. I found it a bit odd that he was saying these things on our very first day. Next, while making small talk, I asked him about what he was doing for a living and he started to dramatically say how he was tired of answering these questions since every single woman was so focused on what job he had. Then he started to brag about how he came from a family of generational wealth and how his parents had so much money that he never needed to work, but he still worked as a freelance artist. I nodded, listening to him while he continued to rant about how he was so scared to go out on dates since he was afraid of meeting broke women and about how every female just cared about how much money a man makes. According to him, he firmly believed in 50-50 and wanted women to pay their own expenses regardless of how much they earned. He told me how he wanted to meet a woman who would be happy to sign a prenup before marriage since he didn't want a gold digger wife. Now, some background about me. I initially grew up in a working class family. My dad was a businessman and my mom was a teacher. When I was in middle school, my dad's business started growing exponentially and we moved up the social ladder. My parents gave me a very comfortable life, but... They also taught me to work hard and find my own path in life. Hence, I had absolutely no interest in finding a rich husband and depended on him for money when I was doing quite well already. So when Chris talked about how he wanted a financially independent woman, I agreed with his statement. I told him how I had the next five years of my life planned and how I was already working part-time to pay off my student loans. I had insisted on paying my student loans, even though my parents would have happily paid for it because I wanted to do something on my own without their help. I told Chris calmly that what he said about a prenup was extremely important since one day I might inherit my dad's business and I would not want my partner to benefit from that. Chris looked at me confused and then started asking questions about my background, my family, my assets. I told him truthfully, about my family, which seemed to really excite him. Suddenly his rhythm changed and he gave me a quick apology telling me how he had expected that I was just like every other woman from his past. But now that he knows I come from a comfortable life myself, he could be more relaxed. To be fair, Chris does come from an insanely rich family, so I can sympathize with how some people might have tried to use him, which is why he had his guard up when we first met. Even though our first date wasn't that great, our second date went much better. Chris seemed more like himself, and he even offered to pay for our dinner, saying that it was his treat. As we continued to know each other, he started opening up to me more and more about his family. His family only cared about prestige. His parents were extremely rigorous whenever Chris would let them meet any of his girlfriends and would ask questions like, where did you go to school? What's your job title? How much do you make? 
How much is your home? He told me how he wanted me to meet his parents, but he was scared that they might be rude to me. And because he genuinely liked me, he didn't want to jeopardize what we had. I assured him that I would not take his parents' words to heart. I wish that was true. From the very first meeting, his mother, Donna, absolutely hated me. And she made it very clear to me multiple times. When they asked about my parents' profession and I told them, his dad, Michael, immediately quipped, saying that he didn't like businessmen since they were very shifty and couldn't be trusted. His mother nodded and said how she wished Chris would have brought home someone from a more dignified family. This was beyond rude for me to hear, and I was ready to walk away from the dinner right then and there. But Chris squeezed my hand under the table. I looked at him and he was pleading with me through his expressions to let it go. So I took a deep breath and decided to suffer through dinner. After that meeting, I swore to never meet his parents because I knew I could never sit through another meal with them. My fiancé agreed and since then has kept his word and has never invited me to meet them ever again. He regularly spends his weekends either golfing with his dad or having dinner with both his parents. In contrast to his parents, my parents are more chill. They never really cared nor showed any excitement about his wealthy family. My fiancé loves spending time with my family because he says they treat him normally and he likes that. Two years passed and our relationship only grew better and better. On our second anniversary, he decided to propose to me and I said yes. It was a really happy occasion. My family was absolutely thrilled. I can't say the same for his family who bombarded him with messages saying how he better make me sign a prenup, otherwise they would not let him have any inheritance and how he could do so much better. This really upset me, but even then, I decided to let it go. After we got engaged, we decided to move in together. Since my place was better located, he decided to move in with me. We had already decided that we would split the bill evenly, but just two months after he moved in, he lost his job. You see, my fiancé worked as an artist, and after COVID hit, there were not a lot of opportunities for his field of work, apparently. I did not worry a lot since I thought that with the experience that he had, he would eventually find another job fairly quickly. I encouraged him to apply for as many jobs as possible or even try for other fields, but he never lucked out. He had been unemployed for two years at this point. I mean, he does get a few weeks work once in a while, but he always seemed to lose the job because he was never able to submit his work on time. Every time he lost a job, he would get into these overly dramatic and depressive episodes where he would lie on the sofa the whole day playing video games or smoking weed. If I reminded him to find a job again, he would tell me how I should stop trying to act like his mother and that he was recovering from his previous job. This had been an ongoing situation. When I would return home from work, he would often be in the same exact place as when I had left him in the morning. He would contribute half of the rent, but he relied on his family to pay him every month. The rest of the bills like TV, internet, gas, electricity and water were paid by me. Occasionally he would drive for Lyft to earn extra money, but he didn't earn a lot. The market is oversaturated in our city, so he could be out for hours and yet not get any rides. The uncertainty of having an income from Lyft made me really anxious every day, and I tried to encourage him to get back to finding a full-time job, but he never seemed to listen. Whatever money he would earn from Lyft, he would spend it on weed, gas, and a few specific grocery items that only he liked to consume. He would do absolutely nothing to contribute to our living situation in any way. Through all of this, I've been working full time while also handling most of the household duties. For many tasks around the house, if I couldn't manage them, I have had to remind and ask him to take care of them. For the past three months, I decided to commit to a budget to save more and pay off my student loan debts. I could obviously ask my parents for help and they would help me in a heartbeat. 
but I didn't want them to think less of my fiancé. My parents would have definitely asked me to reevaluate my relationship and our future, which I knew they would be right to do. But I loved this guy, or so I thought. I just wanted him to find a job so we could get back to how it was before we got engaged. Naturally, all these factors had become major turnoffs for me in our relationship. We had grown distant and neither of us took the initiative for intimacy. On my part, it was because my perception of him had changed. It wasn't appealing to return home to a partner snoring on the couch, surrounded by empty food packets. I found myself craving a companion who surprised me with dates without expecting me to foot the bill, someone who would plan vacations, or at the very least, someone with the drive to start their day with purpose. Despite my desire to move on, I was scared of change. I had decided to engage with him and I thought we still had something worth fighting for. Ending this relationship would have meant losing my best friend. I will admit that the fear of being alone also held me back. I would dwell on happy memories, wishing things could be the same and that I could feel the way I did before. I would discuss this with my fiancé multiple times. I would tell him about my growing resentment due to his lack of work ethic while I was working full-time to support our lifestyle. I would emphasize to him the importance of finding a job or contributing more around the house, but each time he would listen and assure me that he would improve, but unfortunately there was never any change. Recently, my fiancé's cousin, Jackie, got engaged and invited everyone for dinner to celebrate the good news. My fiancé at first didn't want to take me, which I was completely fine with, but his cousin insisted that I had to come. Jackie has always been sweet to me despite how Chris's parents have treated me, so I begrudgingly agreed to go. During dinner, his parents refused to even acknowledge me, so I didn't say anything to them either. Jackie was excitedly telling me about how happy she was, to be getting married to her wonderful man, when Chris's mom snorted after hearing that. We all turned to look at her and she started to say how Jackie's fiancé had hit the lottery, so he was the lucky one. Jackie looked at her fiancé, embarrassed, who was red in the face. Chris's mom continued to say how people were vultures nowadays and everyone was just trying to take away their money. Chris's dad nodded and asked Jackie if she had signed a prenup, to which Jackie replied that she didn't need one. Jackie's mother, Chris's aunt, then interrupted to say how it was vital for Jackie to get her fiancé to sign a prenup, otherwise she would not allow her daughter to get married to anyone. Jackie started yelling at her mother about how she was an adult and her fiancé earned more than her. I sat there quietly watching this drama unfolding before my eyes. Out of nowhere, Chris's mom then turned her attention to us and asked Chris loudly if he had taken care of the prenups with me and he nodded. It was true that we had both decided to sign a prenup just after we had got engaged. Chris's dad nodded approvingly, saying how Chris could never be careful when it comes to gold diggers and it was better to be safe than sorry. I was taken aback by how rude his words were and looked at Chris for support, but he sat quietly munching his food. I asked him if he wasn't going to say something when I had been the one supporting him for two years, but Chris whispered to me that it wasn't worth fighting with them and that I should keep quiet about him not having a job. I was seething with anger. Chris's mom, who was probably watching us whispering to each other, asked loudly if I had something to say. She looked so smug at that time that I couldn't control myself any longer and everything just came out like word vomit. This is basically how our conversation went. You know what, Donna? I do have something to say. I have wanted to say this from the very first day I met you, but now is as good a time as any. You are the actual gold digger in this family. Chris has told me how you and his dad got pregnant in college and had to get married very early on. Not only have you not had any job in your life, I don't see you do anything around the house, which is also why you are this overweight and lazy. 
Donna looked white as a sheet while everyone gasped in shock. Without missing a beat, I continued to tell everyone how I had been funding her unemployed son for the past two years. I told them how he had no job other than to sit on our sofa and eat the whole day. I joked how he was quickly turning into his mother and that they had nothing to worry about since their own son was the real gold digger. Chris looked at me pissed. Chris's dad, Michael, asked him if this was all true and if he really was unemployed. Chris was clearly feeling humiliated, but he had no way out and slowly nodded. I then told Michael how he should have taught his son to work for a living instead of depending on their generational wealth because Chris was living off of the hard-earned money I was earning. Donna started asking Chris about why he was not working and how embarrassing it was for them to hear such things about him. I smirked in satisfaction as I watched Chris shift in his seat uncomfortably. Donna then asked me if I had any shame for exposing her son like this in front of everyone. She told me how I had no right talking about her or Chris's husband and that I come from a lesser family, so I should learn to respect them if I wanted to be married to Chris. Michael added how his son didn't have to work if he didn't want to and that he would support his son if things became worse. They then demanded that I apologize for tarnishing their family's reputation. I looked at them defiantly and refused to apologize, stating that I had nothing to be sorry for. I told them that if they really had so much money, then they should pay me back for the two years I had been supporting their son. Their eyes widened in shock when they heard that. Jackie, Chris's cousin, surprisingly supported me. She chimed in saying that it was hypocritical of Chris's parents to accuse others of being gold diggers when their own son was not contributing financially and depending on someone else. We exchanged a glance and chuckled at the irony, which seemed to infuriate Chris even more. As tensions escalated, Chris started shouting at me, accusing me of throwing him under the bus and ruining the family dinner. He told me how I had no right to bring up his unemployment when he was trying his best to find a job. I snorted and told him that sitting on the sofa the whole day was not really how anyone would find a job. He told me that as my fiancé, I should give him more time. I sighed and calmly responded that I was sick and tired of taking care of him and that maybe he should consider moving back in with his parents since he clearly needed a mother, not a fiancé. I got up from my seat before his parents could insult me further, took off my engagement ring and handed it back to Chris. Everyone looked at me shocked and his parents continued to berate me about how I had no right to insult them, but I had reached my limit. Ignoring their yelling, I left the scene, leaving them to deal with the aftermath of our confrontation. I drove back home and immediately started packing up my things to leave. Chris reached home a few minutes later and started yelling at me about how I had embarrassed him in front of everyone. When he noticed that I was packing, his stance changed and he immediately began to apologize, saying he was ready to find a job if that is what it would take to be with me. I ignored his pleas and I packed whatever I could and left to come live with my parents. Since the dinner... I have been bombarded with messages and calls from Chris's family demanding that I get back with Chris to save their face in front of others and then apologize to them. Chris has been messaging me as well, urging me to come back and even blackmailing me by saying how he is feeling suicidal after I decided to leave him. AITA for leaving my unemployed ex-fiancé after how his family insulted me? Update 1. Thank you everyone for the overwhelming response. I'm happy that so many internet strangers agree with the fact that I left my worthless partner behind. I'm honestly so done with him and his family. I am never going to apologize to them and it is ridiculous for them to even expect it when they have always been the ones to insult me. A lot of people have also been asking why I didn't get married to Chris and stayed engaged for all this time. It's because I was in love with him and genuinely thought he would change. I also didn't want our dream wedding without his parents interfering in our planning. Also, I didn't want to get married to an unemployed man, so I waited. Looking back, 
I am thankful that we didn't get married, otherwise I would have had to go through a divorce now, which would have been much more costly and time-consuming. I talked with my parents and they are furious with me for not breaking off my engagement sooner and coming to them for help. My dad has been joking about how the next guy I date has to go through background verification because regardless of how rich a man is, it doesn't mean that he would have any class, which is so true when it comes to Chris and his family. The way they treated me like shit for all those years makes my blood boil. My dad also went back to my place and got back the rest of my things while Chris kept begging him to talk to me. My dad gave him an earful about how he was an able-bodied man and should work hard to earn money instead of depending on his fiance like a leech. This seemed to have really hurt his feelings since my dad has never been rude to him and my dad told me that Chris burst out crying. He apologized to my dad for how he and his parents had behaved towards me, but my dad told him that it was too late for apologies. I have also talked with Jackie about the incident and she told me that after I left, Donna and Michael had a little meltdown. They seem to be more concerned about their image and societal perceptions than addressing the actual issues within their family. It's quite telling that their reaction is centered around demanding an apology for exposing the truth rather than acknowledging and rectifying the problem at hand. As for Chris, his attempt to emotionally manipulate me by mentioning feeling suicidal was pathetic, but I didn't want to take any chances. I have decided to send an email to his parents asking them to pay me for the two years that their son leached off of me, since they were the ones who offered to do so and to ask him to stop sending me manipulative messages like that. Hopefully, they can check up on him. Update 2. It has been a week since I last updated. Chris has turned up at my parents' place multiple times drunk and out of his mind. He would drunkenly proclaim his love for me and then tell me how he needed me the most during this time, but I was ungrateful to leave him. The last time he turned up, my dad called the cops on him and he was arrested for disturbing the peace and trespassing. It was a difficult decision for us to involve the police, but it became necessary for our safety and peace of mind. Obviously, his parents bailed him out and Chris went right back to sending me hundreds of texts about how much he missed me and how he couldn't live without me. I have not responded to any of Chris's messages or attempts to reach out. It's clear that he is struggling with the consequences of his actions and the reality of the situation. While I emphasize with anyone going through a tough time, it doesn't excuse the toxic behavior and emotional manipulation I have endured during our relationship. Secondly, I made up my mind and sent out a detailed email to his parents specifying every time I paid for Chris. It was easy since I maintain a financial planner that helps me keep track of my expenses. Also because I was the solo earning member between Chris and me, I needed to check where I had to spend my money. I also added my account details to the email. To be honest, I did not want to send this email to them, but some Redditors pointed out to me how this was rightfully my money anyway. I highly doubt that they are going to pay me anything after my outburst, but I want to knowingly challenge them and to let them know exactly how much I spent on their worthless son. For me, it's not just about the financial aspect, it's also about the way they made me feel by judging my family background. I want to make them feel the same by outlining the various financial contributions I have made during Chris's period of unemployment, covering aspects such as bills and other shared expenses. Sending this email was a significant step for me, as it also marked my commitment to standing up for myself. Update 3. They responded. I did not expect them to even acknowledge my email, but Michael replied back to me saying how even though he doesn't forgive me for the outburst, he's concerned about Chris. He wrote how me and Chris should meet for a last time so I could give Chris some 
sort of closure because he was close to losing his mind. He wrote how Donna and he were extremely concerned about him and begged me to talk to their son. He also wrote that he was transferring the money that I had spent on Chris and that he wished me all the best for my future regardless of whether or not I would choose to stay with their son. I really don't know what to think about this email. I mean, on one hand, I am happy that I have successfully recovered my lost money, but I really don't want to speak to Chris. I want them to take care of their son instead of asking me to give him closure. I have already said to Chris everything that I wanted to say, and I don't know if having one more conversation would help him in any way. Has anyone else gone through this with their exes? Is it a good idea for me to talk to Chris again? Update 4. I talked with Chris. I know a lot of people had advised me against talking with him, but I had been feeling really guilty for the past couple of days after his parents sent me that email. It was eating my brain and I decided that for the sake of what we had, I would have a last conversation with Chris and give him the closure he needed. I called him up and he picked up my call immediately. He started to ask if I had finally forgiven him, but I took a deep breath and told him that this wasn't why I was calling. He became quiet as I started to tell him why exactly I had broken up with him. Chris, I've noticed that over the years we've grown apart. The dinner at Jackie's place was just a breaking point, but it made me realize that our relationship had been strained for a while. I've been falling out of love and it's not fair to either of us to continue like this. I want you to understand that it's not just about that one incident. Your parents have treated me poorly throughout the relationship and I don't want to marry into a family that doesn't welcome me. Our values and ambitions are different. I'm an ambitious person and I want to be with someone who shares similar goals and aspirations. It's become clear to me that we're headed in different directions. Hearing this, Chris started to cry and told me how he had no idea that I had felt this way. I felt bad for the guy, honestly. I know it's hard to hear, I replied gently. But I believe it's important for both of us to be honest. I wish you nothing but the best, Chris. I hope you find someone more suited to your desires and goals. It's time for both of us to move on. Chris apologized for everything. I never meant to hurt you, he said. I appreciate your apology, Chris, I responded. Please don't ever come to my place drunk or send me messages since I will be blocking you from today. I think this would be a good idea for both of us. Let's end things on a good note. Goodbye. Chris continued to silently cry but didn't protest back. I ended the call and blocked him immediately. It was honestly heartbreaking to block the man who I thought I would be getting married to. What really broke my heart was when I had to delete his picture from my gallery because I just couldn't stare at his face any longer. Moving forward, I will continue to focus on myself and surround myself with a support system that values and uplifts me. It's quite evident that I have made the right decision in leaving this toxic situation and family. I plan on staying strong and taking the time I need to heal and rebuild. I deserve to have happiness and a partner who appreciates and contributes to the relationship. I've also started applying for jobs in different cities so I can change my city. I have always wanted to live somewhere new, but I never got the chance to since I was with Chris and he was adamant about living near his parents. Now that I'm free, I can live wherever I want. Hopefully, I can get a better job than the one I currently have. I'm excited about my future and to see what life has in store for me. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.